All right, thanks for staying with us. In case you do not know, today is International Teacher's Day. And where's my video? <laughs> I want to play one short video quickly. <laughs> yes, there's a video from Tenny the Entertainer. If they can just quickly kill my video for me. All right, so October 5th re uh, recognizes today as World Teachers Day by the UNESCO, and it started in 1994 with the aim to uh, honoring the adoption of UNESCO um, ILO recognition. The theme of World Teachers Day is the transformation of education begins with the teachers. Everybody that knows, know that. <laughs> Whether you become... So teachers are, how do I put it? Teachers have the capacity to actually put you on the trajectory for growth and success, you know, very early in your life. So they are very important. I remember my oldest son, the, the first teacher he ever had. In fact, when he went, I think when she went on leave, he kept on crying nonstop. She was such an inspiration. She made him love everything about literacy, you know, everything about schoolwork, everything about, uh, what do they call the thing again? Don't forget the elementary level. Man, I know Vex. They are older now, <laughs> you know. Everything about math, English, in, at that level, he fell in love with schoolwork because of Mrs. A. Gozwe. I can never forget her name. She was such an amiable person, you know. And, you know, for every time we get the opportunity to celebrate teachers, we must tell them they are loved. Mm -hmm. And I really will, I really am hoping and praying that we get to a Nigeria where it is not the people that are unable to pass jam that are combining 10 YEC results are the ones going to teachers college. We are now getting people that have straight A's. We have people that have like, you know, 300 over 400 or 350 over 400 in jam. They are the ones, yes, and they are passionate, you know. We want the most brilliant minds to be in the educational space compared to what we have now. But what's your experience with your teachers quickly? Um, so what you said about teachers um, discovering talent, so I um, take my reference from Beyonce. Hmm. I think um, her teacher was the one who discovered and told her, you can sing, you're a performer. Yeah. So teachers have the ability. And I feel like being a teacher is even a special grace because it takes a lot to become nurturing, especially for the smaller ones, the younger ones. You have to be very patient and not everyone has that capacity. I've had very good experiences with my teachers when I was small and I still remember some of their names and I still speak with some of them because they had so much um, good impact in who I am and you know my focus right now. I've had teachers that told me you're talented in this and some of the things I'm doing today are some of the things which some of these teachers have told me in the past. So mm. I celebrate teachers today. Mm. We love you. How about you Mary? Uh, I think my dad was Teacher, you know, especially for maths and you know all of that. I mean, he was very strict, but he would flog me when you get it right. He'll say, "Hey, now you're my daughter," <laughs> and you know stuff like that. So he really did. They were very. My parents were very active, you know, with my schoolwork. My mom was for English because she was also an English teacher as well. You know, so she's English homework, dad is math homework, you know, so they, they played a huge role mm. for that teaching experience for me. In school, I did get close to some of my teachers, you know, but it was never that, you know, some people are extra with the closeness, mm -hmm. you know, you see. So I was just that low-key student, they know, okay, oh, yeah, we know her, you know, hey, we know her talent, you know, they guide me and stuff, you know, but for me, my parents were my biggest you know teachers for me well i've had really nice teachers over the years you know but there's a particular teacher i had she used to take us english and crs in my secondary school new bridge you know mrs so till today if i if you walk around me and you are you know those who that walk with sleeper you've been yeah. hearing the noise <laughs> Hi, she hated it <laughs> who is that walking down the, like she will she will she will punish Ah, so you don't you know you are a lady? As a lady, you're supposed to walk straight. You're supposed to, you know, you walk like noiseless walking. Ah, 
Is it? So till tomorrow, if I hear people dragging their feet while walking, anything irks me. No. <laughs> you know, I went to a Catholic boarding school, and trust me, it did play a whole lot. You hmm. know, the whole how you have to be in line, how you have to do everything. <laughs> there's refectory, there's timing, and I was a laggard. But you know, I was I was really small, so they just used to pity me. Everybody out of the hostel, and you just see me with my shoes and everything. He's just like, what's wrong with you, fine girl? What exactly is your problem? And then all the seniors would like me, so I didn't really used to get punished. So I just, you know, you know how you silently just escape from things. A lot that's, of things. That's how I was. Ah, you know, grace. That's really how I was. All know? right, Glory. Let's start with you. What did you find for us in the news? I found something rather interesting and historical. Uh, in the ECA, sorry for those who are coming from Umuahia, if I don't pronounce it correctly. In the ECA Ni Ugu town of Amakama, in Umuahia, South Local Government area of Abia State, is a famous and ancient tree known as Amakama Wooden Cave. What makes Amakama Cave unusual is the fact that it has a huge hollow that can comfortably contain um, up to 20 adults. The gigantic size of the hollow is not so surprising as the tree is said to be as old as the ancient community of Amakama. It's a whole lot of write-up. It, it was gathered that the tree dates back to the era of slavery when it served as a refuge for persons who were fleeing from colonial and slave masters. So what um, caught my attention about this is it took me back when I was small. So I did not grow up in Nigeria. I grew up in Cameroon. So um, when I was small, my dad would bring us to Nigeria for holidays and we would go to the village. And um, when we go to the village, he would take us around showing us some of these ancient trees, the stream and all of that. So when I saw this, I felt like something interesting because it took me back to those times when I was small. Okay. Well. <laughs> we will visit the tree soon. <laughs> How are you, Mary? Um, I have Ethiopian Embassy reportedly bans visa on arrival for Nigerians. This is becoming disturbing. Turkey is doing it, Dubai has done it, and now is Ethiopia. I mean, where what's our foreign affairs doing for the country? Because it's like having a green passport now is almost it's not right. yeah, you know. Uh, but wait, so this is interesting. No? Because I was looking for flights, and the cheapest I found was Ethiopian L <laughs> Airlines. Okay, okay, no, so it doesn't, ha it doesn't happen to... For transit. You're transiting overnight, you know, um, you don't need to Okay, have, you know, so it's not affecting yeah, us. it's not affecting yeah. that. Let me know, just be checking. You know, <laughs> but I mean, but it's sad. It's very know, sad. It's very, very disturbing. It's very Foreign sad. Foreign affairs, we need to look into it, because at least we were comfortable that, you know, our African countries at least... If uh, UK and America is so hard to get, we started exploring Zanzibar all, the, yes. and all of that. So imagine if we can't go freely to these places again. Maybe Ghana herself will tell us. Ah, that. they will soon tell us so. <laughs> the way it's going. We need visa. So I found this interesting. Um, says terrorists on Wednesday, that's today, released about 23 remaining victims of Kaduna train attack. If this is true... Um, I'm happy. It's really sad that it took this long, but the fact that they've been freed, I, I hear they were freed at 4 p.m. today. The Secretary of um, the Chief of Defense Staff Action Committee, Yusuf Usman, confirmed their release. Um, so, I mean, thank God that they are safe back home with their um, families. I'm just praying and hoping that we do not see this kind of evil again. And um, really, that's all I can say. All right, so let's go on a break. When we come back from the break, we'll be discussing the impact of NGOs in nation building. Stay with us.